And so two today, no movement whatsoever, all staying in Attar and all arguing their corner. Time for the mechanics to fly in, permitted to this time, and get to work trying to repair some of the damaged machinery. And plenty of it there is too, as ever, on the Dakar. This is Savi's car. The bikers, leader, Matteo Mioni. Sparing a word for Jan Roma, who's of course out injured, but still in Atta, watching them all come in. But Olhauser, head of the BMW bike team, said everything was okay until the day of Roma's crash. That was a sad day, very hard on us. Team spirit has always been way up there. Concerning the boxer engines, with new machines, nothing to say really. Just one problem after another, terrible bad luck over the first half of this Dakar. Well, KTM are having a much better time of things this time around. Too technical, they said, last year. They've certainly got the reliability sorted out this time. Oh, it's going to go on there. Says at the beginning, we pushed BMW very hard in order to make something break, try and make that happen. That did indeed happen, and now we just have to control the race. There are no favourites in KTM. Whoever's on top is the leader as far as we're concerned and we'll be doing everything we can to make it all the way and bring success to our outfits. Yes, we'll be looking to lead the pack all the way to Dakar, he says. As far as Kenny himself is concerned, apparently he can't even get on a bike after a final bad crash last year, of course, which damaged his back. He's now part of the admin team and enjoying life, he says, watching the others do the hard work. And hard work, plenty of that today in Attar. As we said, they were permitted to fly mechanics in. Time to freshen up for competitors and indeed the machines as well. That's an air filter, would you believe? Look at the grime coming out of that. Stephen Pellehansel said, well, it's done. Halfway there. And a rest day for us in Atta. Looking nice and fresh, I must say. Everything went very well for the Nissan team so far, he says. We're leading the T1 category. Three hours ahead of the second, who's Thierry Magnaldi, former teammate in the Yamaha biking team. And we're not far from the top ten. Eleventh position, in fact, in the overall ranking. So I'm very happy with this Dakar route until now. It's been a beautiful start for us. We've had hard, tricky tracks in Morocco very dusty and technical and since the beginning in Mauritania we've been really looking forward to the beautiful desert landscapes and enjoying them as they've been passing by there's been a lot of stones ergs very difficult to cross over ergs being of course those mountainous humps of sand very high dunes the rally has really started there's a lot of news every day and we hope we're going to improve our leadership he says we're a little bit scared because the Nissan never took part all the way in the Dakar Finally, we're hoping everything will be okay. And we wish him and all the rest who are still in this tremendous race all the very best. Rest day in Atta, they're using it very well indeed. Freshening up the machines and the bodies in equal measure. Stay with us, we'll be back with a roundup for you of the first half of the Dakar. It's a short one, stay with us. The new Mitsubishi Pajero Pinin. Take it off road. What Euromaster does for each driver on the Paris Dakar Rally. Euromaster does for each driver every day of the year in its service centers. Euromaster, what drives us is you. 
tyres, exhausts, brakes, shocks, batteries, oil. Euromaster. Autosport International. Top cars, top teams, Formula One drivers, rally crates, top riders in bike sport. Call 0870 264 4444 or look at the website. Welcome to British Eurosport's Bad Boy Competition. Just answer the following question and you can win a fantastic scooter. Which tennis bad boy was famous for clashing with umpires? Stefan Edberg, Boris Becker or John McEnroe? If you know the answer, call now on 0906 614 0021. That's 0906 614 0021. Play and win with British Eurosport. Back to the Total Paris Dakar 2001 with Total. Welcome back. Well, what an opening 10 days it has been on Dakar 2001. Triumph and disappointment in equal measure. One thing never changes though, the sheer beauty and drama of the scenery. Richard Sanks led us off like a true champion. Changed to KTM this year after two successful runs with BMW. And he was looking very good early on. The only man up there with him, Juan Roma, had swapped teams the other way to BMW. He won stages six and eight. A real battle between those two then. Today, we're to find out just how hard the Dakar can be if it turns against you. Sankt pointed it fourth in the first stage. He then won stages two and four. And these two just stuck together when we got to the soft stuff. As always, cat and mouse. But also, great respect. And, of course, disappointment when your foe has some trouble. Oh, uh, Johan Rama brought back by helicopter after falling yesterday. But then Richard Sykes. Nothing bodily broken, just the bike. I broke down, he says, at kilometer 335. And Fabrizio Mioni has taken the overall lead in the rally. Very bad luck for me. The rest day tomorrow, we could have changed the engine. Seven K KTMs, he says. Mine was the one that broke. Well, even good riders, experienced, were taking tumbles. Part of being fit and a top-class rider, of course, is you avoid the injuries that others less well suited to this terrain can't avoid. You bounce if you're fit, if you're not. I've broken my foot, he said. Cushio, they'll keep on the Honda. His Dakar over, others well and truly still in this race. Esteban Puyol, one stage nine. The circular route that caused the cars so many problems. No penalties for the bikes. Puyol showing that some of the lesser known names could well shine in this Dakar as the stars take the plane home. Others may be wishing they'd join them. The sand got very, very soft indeed. Tempest fraying. More victims in the soft stuff. Well, some floundered, others flew, and Fabrizio Mioni was one of those. Second on stage four, seventh, seven, second on seven as well, fourth on eight. It was a measured race as far as he's concerned. The first half, he knew what he had to do, and he was doing it taking it easy and leading. 
And so this is how they'll start off tomorrow on Stage 11. With Mioni leading Acheron's by 20 minutes and 13 seconds, it's KTM's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, where there are two wheels, there are, of course, four. And the drama, if anything, even more so. It didn't look like that early on as we entered Africa. The Schlesser buggies dominating proceedings. Schlesser himself, outstanding. One stage is two, four, six, and nine. Where he went, Serbia followed. Close behind, doing his usual backup roll. Even one stage five. And stage eight. Finished second in six, seven, and nine. It was impressive. And then this happened. Caught on camera. No doubt about it. That is called assistance. And it's not permitted in certain areas. Schlesser picked himself up a one-hour penalty. While Paul Earl Serbia, without Schlesser to pull him out, his hydraulic jack, the automatic thing, you can see, stainless steel. They dropped down and helped the cars out of soft dunes. It jammed down, jammed his chances of winning this one. Certainly put a dent in it. Others enjoying better fortune. The Mitsubishis, lightweight machines, not as light as the buggies, but of course, four-wheel drive, good on the bendy stuff, and they were enjoying themselves. Fontenay was there. Watching the buggies go past, but Schlesser, of course, with that penalty, was down the field. Fontenay crashed on stage nine. His first accident. And then things just got worse. The suspension was gone. He says, we've lost a wheel, lost it progressively, tried to repair it, about 100 kilometers. And the drive shaft came out, but now we're just trying to put the whole thing back together. But one man who really had it together, Matsuoka. Got a scratch on his vehicle, apparently. He was just flying, quite literally on occasion. Bikers, get out of the way, I'm coming through. Good start for Matsuoka, second in stage two and three. One stage seven. And Jutta Kleinschmidt, well, she thought she'd won stage nine, but she received that 30-minute penalty for straying too far off the piste on what was supposed to be a navigation stage. It shocked her, it shocked many. She's down into fourth place from second, and the man who has, of course, gained was the man who complained, Mr. Schlesser. Well, rules are there to be abided by, and stage nine, as we've said, could well prove to have been a very, very crucial one. Mauritania. Beautiful sights, the local people more than welcoming. And what sights they're seeing. Bruno Sami and Delizotti in the Ford Ranger. A heavy machine, he says he's very happy. We're up there with the others. Well, maybe now. Only two-wheel drive, got all the power, but it often digs itself in. Others were having other problems. Pelle Hansel leading T1. And so we can take a look at how they'll get underway tomorrow. After stage 10, this is how they'll start stage 11. It's a fairly easy stage. We'll be more on that in a moment. Max Walker leading Schlesser by 35 minutes. Then comes Sousa and Kleinschmidt down to fourth ahead of Serbia. And what about the big boys? Well, it was always billed as a battle between Kamas and Tatra. That's exactly what's happened. Carol Lepre leads on board the Tatra. He's one hour and 14 minutes ahead of Chagini in the Kamas. But just one bad day in the soft stuff, or indeed when the rocks get in the way, even of these large bohemoths. And of course, things can change, and one hour and 14 minutes can fade away very rapidly indeed. Kabirov is out. 
but the battle still goes on between the Tatras and the Camas. Not just them, the Hino's in there as well, Sugirao and Brasino, and Reef in the man, doing well. Even Mercedes are up there with their large machine, piloted by Marshok. They're impressive, and they're certainly fast. You don't want to get in the way of these boys. confirmation of how the trucks will start off. It's Lepre leading Cigini, followed by the two Enos, and then the man of Rafe. Do stay with us after this short break. We'll be having a look at what you missed, some of the more dramatic moments from stage 10. Keep it here. sound better behind the wheels. Tracks that make you want to drive simply for the sake of it. And these are the 60 original and best road tracks. They're the greatest drive songs ever written. All on four CDs or cassettes called On the Road. They're all the songs that'll stay with you however far you're going. weekend grab your winter pass and enter the british eurosport winter park there's the alpine ski world cup the men's downhill from Wengen is our peak of the day plus there's combined slalom for the men and women after the four hills classic the ski jumping world cup takes off in harakov in the czech republic with the first flying hill of the season the crack shots are chasing round five of the Biathlon World Cup in Rus